Hey everyone, Michael here with another video. So today we're gonna to be going through our manufacturing phase for our Seric Omnicams. And this will be for milling in-house. So after we have our design completed, we're gonna be able to mill these on our Seric mills right over here. And this will take you step-by-step step through that process all the way from having a Seric block in your hand to having your final fired restoration in your hand ready to deliver for your patients. All right, so now that our design has been finished on here and that we've shown it to our faculty, they've approved it, we're ready to move on to the milling process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our block. And one of the things that you can see on this block is that all those zirconia blocks have a barcode on there along with the numbers. Um, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to enter that into our software on here so that um, it communicates with the milling unit to ensure that it's milled correctly. So. Again, just like everything else, we're gonna move on from the design tool by hitting next, and it's gonna bring up the manufacturing page as well. So it's adjusting the mill position. So this should be what it looks like when we're milling something out of a chair side zirconia. Uh, again, like I said, if you select a different type of zirconia, it will not look like this and it will not mill properly. So the first thing we're gonna do is move the sprue. So we're gonna click on the sprue right here on, under tools. And our goal with this is, the way it's gonna mill this is it's going to have, it calls it a sprue. It's just gonna be the connection between the milled crown and the rest of the block. And what you are gonna to have to do is you are going to have to adjust away um, and remove that sprue. So what you wanna do is you wanna make your life as easy as possible. So. The ideal position for a sprue is going to be on a convex area because if you think about it if it's a concave area and the sprue goes right down in the middle of it it's going to be more difficult to adjust rather than if we put it on a concave area so like right here where it's at right now this thing is going to suck if we have to remove, remove this sprue because we're going to have to adjust the occlusal surface and have to do all of that so let's go ahead and rotate this around through here and we're gonna put it on the buckle portion. Um, if, it, if we put it in the area where it's not gonna be able to fit it, you will see red. So always check for that, but we're good in this case. Um, this kind of is in that buckle groove a little bit. So let's rotate around to the distal. There we go. That looks to be in a really nice convex area. There's no red at portion, so the sprue is ready to go. One thing to note is that if we are milling in Emacs, uh, it will not generate a sprue uh, because uh, just the way that it mills. So you normally don't have to set this sprue position with Emacs. So we got the sprue in the correct port position. Now we're just going to make sure that we have it selected correctly in the milling unit. And again, this is where if we set everything up correctly in the initial portion with choosing the correct material and choosing the correct uh, milling unit, we aren't gonna have to change anything on here. But just to go through it one more time, select the milling unit, uh, like we said, if we selected zirconia, it's not even going to let us mill on, on the non-zirconia milling unit. So it has to be either number two or number three for zirconia. If it's Emacs, you can do any, any of the other ones. We normally would use one or number eight. Um, just those are, are the ones that we normally use for those. And so we can select either two or number three. We have three selected right here. We're going to choose fast for milling. Um, because there's actually really no difference between the quality of milling between fast and fine. Um, it's just going to waste more of your time if we mill it fine. And we're going to choose the block. And again, we need to make sure that we have this selected as chair side zirconia. And then it's going to send it to the Seric speed fire, which you're going to be able to see in a minute. So we're going to hit start. And what it's going to ask us is it's going to ask us for this barcode right there. Um, so sometimes this font looks pretty stupid, but um, this one is going to be 02431DN. So we're going to hit start on here. Now that we have the error on our screen, we're going to keep that up. We're not going to hit stop. And we're going to take our block and we're going to head over to 250. So now that we're here in our milling room, what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that we're at the correct milling unit, which in this case is number three. So just for you to know, this is number three, this is number two. Like I said before, these are our zirconia milling units. And then we have a bunch of other ones over here, but the one right here to the left, uh, when you walk in is going to be milling unit one. And then 
The one over there by the other computer is going to be milling unit eight. So we're gonna be using those for lithium disilicate only. But as you can see on these, the burrs are different and they are set up for zirconia. So what we're gonna do is if we look over here on milling unit three, um, you're gonna be able to see there's a little screen that generally is not very helpful, but it's, it has the same error that we saw on this screen on the Omnicam, which it says, please close the milling chamber door. Before we do that, we're gonna put our block in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna place it just right here. You're gonna line up this metal portion and then you're going to twist it around until you feel it kind of click into place. So once it clicks into place, you're not gonna be able to rotate it freely. You're gonna take the screwdriver right here. And if you see, there's a small screw that is going to be right here. And you're gonna make sure that we go ahead and tighten it down all the way until you hear a click. That means we're good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the milling door and then it's going to start positioning the units. Um, this is very loud while it does this. Uh, one of the things to just make sure, um, first off, you're gonna hit start because it says please insert the block and close the milling chamber door. We already did that, whoops. So just hit start. Um, after I hit start, what it's going to do is it's going to position the burrs and make sure that it knows where the block is at and also making sure that it checks to make sure the block is in the exact same block that we set in the uh, software as well. Um, one of the things to do with this is I would watch this just to make sure it actually starts milling because it's gonna go through three processes for this. It's gonna first off position the block in the correct area, then it's going to go ahead and start spraying water. And then the third thing is it's actually gonna start milling it. So once it kind of starts milling it, 99% of the time it's good all the way through. Um, the only thing that could happen with it is if we uh, need more water pressure. And in that case, all you would do is you would just take one of these, uh, these uh, filter units, remove it, and then um, you, we, uh, we maintain these and replace the filters frequently. But what you can do if you're in a pinch that you need to finish this crown, is you can just go to one of the other milling units and of course I point to the one that doesn't have a <laughs> water filter in it, but you can go to another one of the milling units, just remove it, and all you're gonna do is just slide it in place and then click and hit start. And then it'll ask you whenever you do that if you want to continue the previously started milling process and you just hit yes for that. It'll be good. So um, we're going to get this milling and it's starting right now. And then we'll come back here in a minute, cut the screw off and then put it on our speed fire. Now that our crown has finished, we're going to go ahead and remove it from the milling unit. So we're just going to open this up right here, take our screwdriver, go ahead and unscrew it. And then this is what we're looking at for the crown. So there's a few things to note. First off, the color and the size is completely off. One of the things with zirconia, as we center it here in a minute, is it shrinks um, a certain percent. And so what it does in order to compensate that for the milling process, it mills it larger so that after we center it, it will be the correct size. Um, the other aspect of it is if we look at the shade here, um, we've selected A2 for our shade. And you can see, obviously, this is nowhere near A2. But don't be alarmed, within that centering process, it will um, both shrink, but it also will um, turn into the color um, that we've selected when we milled it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to go remove this sprue. So we're gonna go back to the operatory and get ready to remove it. So we're gonna get our handpiece ready with two burrs. So we, what we need to make sure is that we have extra fine or fine burrs for this, and we need more of a pointed burr, and then also a fine football burr to kind of smooth this out. Because one of the things that you'll notice with this is that, um, like I said before, it's in a weaker state right now before it is centered. Um, and so it's much easier to go ahead and remove it and smooth it right now, but before we go through and actually center it. So first off, we're gonna come in here. I've got my fine burr right here. And what I'm gonna do first off, and what I always recommend is, unless you've done a number of these, I would recommend kind of drilling a little bit on the block portion of it first to kind of get a feeling for what it feels like because this cuts more like chalk than anything else. It's a, it's a very weird feeling. It's unlike really anything you'll feel in dentistry. And so I'm just gonna cut a little bit here on the side just so I can kind of feel that because it kind of almost disintegrates as well. So now that we kind of have a feeling of cutting on the side and what it feels like to trim this, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and start to trim off this sprue. 
Now I want to give myself, I want to cheat a little bit more towards the block rather than towards the actual crown, um, just because I don't want to have any indentations on the final crown that weren't there in our design. So I'm just going to go through here. I'm just going to cut just slowly all the way through. All right, and then I feel a break. I'm going to stop, remove the block, just place it to the side. And then you can see that we have that sprue still remaining that is pretty significant and is, uh, well, this would look awful if you actually deliver this for the patient. So we can go ahead and discard our um, pointed burr and we're gonna switch over to a fine round burr to kind of round that out. Now, another burr that I really like for this part is I like to use those soft flex, soft flex discs that we have um, and go ahead and kind of use that to smooth it out. I don't have any today, so we're just gonna make do with this fine um, diamond football burr. And you're just gonna come through here and just go through and smooth it all out. And again, being really careful because it does cut like butter. I'm just making sure that everything is nice and smoothed out. And that looks pretty much perfect. So now that we've removed the screw, we've smoothed it out, we're ready to go ahead and take it over to our firing unit to finish this crown. So now that we've removed the sprue, um, we're gonna take it back to our uh, milling lab and we're gonna take it over to our speed fire units. So these are our two speed fire units um, and it's gonna be random of kind of which one it sends it to. Normally it's gonna send the job to the left one um, from downstairs. For whatever reason today, it sent it to the right one um, because of course it did. Uh, so one of the things with this is that you're just gonna look on here and look at the screen and check for the patient name um, just to make sure that that's correct. And then we'll also give the material that we're doing this out of and then also the tooth number that we're doing. So make sure it all lines up. And so we're gonna click on it right here because we got my name right there. And then it's gonna pull up this screen right here. So one of the things with this screen is you can see three options on here. So we milled this crown wet. So we're going to need to do a pre-drying phase as well. So we're gonna go over here so we've got pre-drying, we've got centering, and we're gonna, we have pre-drying and centering. So in this case, because we milled it wet, we're gonna select uh, pre-drying and centering. And you can see over here, our platform will be lowering down. And one of the things to note is that if we do start milling these zirconias dry, uh, then we will only be selecting the, um, the centering phase. So now what we're going to do is it says go ahead and load the furnace. So we're going to place this in the furnace with the intaglio side facing up, just like this. Just make sure it's centered on there. That's like centered like in the middle of it uh, before we start centering it. Uh, and so once it's gonna be placed with the intaglio facing up, uh, we're just gonna hit play. And then you're gonna see that it's gonna go ahead and slowly raise it up and you'll be able to track its progress on the screen right here. So it's quoting us about 34 minutes for this, um, but once it comes down from the, uh, from the centering unit, it's gonna be at about 1400 degrees Celsius. So it's obviously not gonna be safe for you to go ahead and grab it. And so what we're gonna be looking for is we're gonna wait about 10 minutes from it. And then you can see the temperature right here at the top of the screen. So right now it's, at, it's climbing, but it's at about 50 degrees Celsius. That is going to be the temperature inside the actual milling unit, or sorry, the centering unit. And so generally speaking, once you see this um, number drop to about 220 degrees Celsius inside the milling unit, uh, inside the centering unit, um, it's going to be safe for us to go ahead and grab our crown. And so we're gonna wait for this to finish and then we're gonna come back once it's done centering. All right, now that our crown has finished centering, we can go ahead and make sure that it's safe to grab. Um, our temperature right here is about 102 degrees Celsius. So um, again, that's the temperature inside the actual firing unit, um, not the temperature of the crown. It dissipates the heat when it's outside of it really well. So we're safe to go ahead and grab this. So if you're ever concerned, you can use our tweezers that we have um, in order to uh, grab it. But this is what it looks like once it's done. It looks phenomenal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these small um, little carrying cases. We're gonna just open it up. We're gonna place our crown in there. And then we are gonna be ready to go ahead and deliver the, take this to our appointment and deliver it to our patient. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on the manufacturing phase of CEREC. 
Hopefully you found this series helpful and informative so that you feel more prepared to utilize CEREC here at the UMKC School of Dentistry. So with that being said, if you have any further questions or anything that you would like me to cover, please reach out to me, let me know, and I would be more than happy to answer those questions and maybe make some potential videos in the future as well. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.